Um, third, third bootstrapping um, scenario issue. So right now, you guys are starting your companies, and you're probably thinking, like, what are the risks to my company? You know, am I going to figure out the right product to build? You know, am I going to figure out how to acquire customers? Am I going to be able to find people to work on my stuff? Um, you know, am I going to be able to raise funding that I need for um, executing on my plans? Like you've got the various different things that you think about as risks. And when we were starting Backblaze, we also were like, what are all the different things that might go wrong? What we never ever thought was a risk to Backblaze was a flood in Thailand. Right? It's like, what? You know, like, we're here in San Mateo. Like, this is, that would be very random. Like, why would we ever consider that? Well, so what we found out was that half of the world's hard drives are manufactured in this one region of Thailand. And so when this region of Thailand flooded, all of a sudden, overnight, half of the world's hard drives went away. And our business, eh, you know, kind of relies on hard drives. They're kind of important. Um, so overnight, hard drives were almost impossible to buy, and they were three times the price. Okay, so what do you do? So, you know, again, if we had millions in the bank, we would have been like, well, this sucks, but we're going to take our millions and we're going to just blow our millions on paying extra for hard drives. And there was actually, a, um, there was a, one of the big companies offered Seagate 250 million dollars just for the right to get the first hard drives off the assembly lines when they were when they were manufactured. Yeah, we'd, we were a little shy of 250 million <laughs> by about 249,000, I think. Um, so um, what we started thinking was this. Um, so what we needed were hard drives to go in those servers. Remember the plywood box. You know, we needed internal hard drives, the, the things that look kind of like this, right? You know, the, uh, to go into these um, servers. And we needed about 45 of these every single day to feed the machine, um, accepting data from customers. Well, those drives were like three, four, five hundred dollars if you could even find them, which you generally couldn't. But what we noticed was that the external hard drives, um, which you, know, you guys use for plugging into your, your Mac or PC, um, those drives were actually still kind of available. And we, you could get them, and they were more expensive, but they weren't dramatically more expensive. They were like 20% more expensive, not three times. And so we're like, eh, I wonder if we could use these instead. So we bought a handful of these external drives, and then we did what we called shucking, which is after we took them out of the package, we cracked open the plastic and took the drive out from inside. And it turns out, same exact drive that you can't buy. Um, so we're like, well, that's bizarre, right? So this drive, you can't find anywhere. And if you can possibly find it, it's three times the price. <coughs> When they, you take that drive and you put it inside of a plastic case and you attach a power supply and you attach this cord and you put a manual in and you stick it in a box, all of a sudden you can buy those and you can buy them for cheaper. We're like, okay, I don't know what market inefficiency caused that, but I think we figured out our path. We need to get 45 of these every single day, crack them open and stick them in our servers. So, we drew this th on our whiteboard. Um, these are the names of the people. These are the retail stores in the, in the area. And we said, your job before you show up at the office every day is to go to one of these retail stores and buy these external drives and bring them to the office. And this is just what we're going to do. And you know, it, it seems nutty, but you know, you got to survive somehow. So people would drive to the various different stores and do this. Um, one of our guys, actually, this is the path he took. <coughs> and those are all the stores he stopped at uh, around the Bay Area just to collect drives that we would then crack open and put into servers. I think he drove like 200 miles in, in one day to do this. So, you know, um, that worked for a little while, but then we had this little problem, which was the store started saying um, limit two per person. And we're like, okay, so we've got 12 people, two per person, 24, we need 45, we've got a problem. 
So what we then started doing was coming up with other <laughs> solutions, um, one of which was to get friends, family, and even customers involved. So we wrote on our blog um, that we are looking for people to go and buy us hard drives. And if you can go to the store and successfully buy hard drives and give them to us, we will pay you back for the cost of the drive plus $5 for every single drive that you bring us. So you get a $5 bounty if you can help us. And so we had friends, family, coworkers, um, customers going to stores, buying drives, and either driving them here or shipping them to us um, uh, in order for us to keep the, the wheels on the bus and going. And so th th this is a picture of, um, this is a friend of mine, Vladik. Um, this is uh, Christmas Day. Um, I, I'm actually, I've arrived here with an SUV. All those boxes are full of drives. Um, that he has managed to, to buy from various different places. And um, I showed up on Christmas Day with an SUV just so we could bring them all to the data center and, and uh, rack more, more servers. Uh, and so, you know, through this process, like, it seemed insane, right? I mean, it was like, you know, like, we can't possibly sustain this. Like, you can't just have everybody constantly buying, you know, two drives at a time when you need, like, a thousand drives a month. Um, but the thing is, again, it's like, your options are go out of business, raise prices on customers, which sucks, um, stop offering unlimited storage, which sucks, um, stop accepting new customers, sucks, um, or you know, continue offering the same $5 unlimited uh, backup service to all your customers and quietly in the background run, 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 run as fast as you can and buy lots and lots of drives. So we bought literally thousands of drives like this. Oh, let me finish. Um, so you know, th thousands of drives, petabytes of storage that we bought through this process. Um, so, you know, kind of the, the net of all of the, this is um, bootstrapping a company is harder in some ways, easier in some ways than, than um, raising a, a venture to do a company. Um, it, but it's not, just, um, it's not just doing less. Like, there are actually benefits that you get from bootstrapping. Um, so, you know, in the Valley, um, we focus a lot on fundraising. Like, oh my God, Uber raised another billion dollars in funding. Like, isn't that awesome? It's like, no, that's not awesome. It's awesome if they need it to grow their business better and faster than they could without it, and they can do it efficiently. Um, a lot of companies raise funding, and then it's blown, and they would have been better off if they had spent the money, spent the time and, and energy focused on growing their business instead of on, the f on raising the funding. So kind of be uh, unconventional around your thinking if you're going to bootstrap. Um, don't necessarily say, you know, the, go the best path is to raise funding. It may or may not be. And don't try necessarily to compete against other people who've raised funding in the same way that they are doing. Um, build a sustainable business. One of the nice things for, for us was that at a number of these points, we could continue running the business because we had built a business that's sustainable. And by sustainable, I don't mean like a green business. I mean a business that can survive. Um, so, you know, think about keeping your costs low. Think about getting cash in the door um, sooner than later. Um, you know, don't, don't wait for years where it's like, oh yeah, we'll just have lots of users and we'll figure it out in the future. That's okay if you're running a venture funded company um, where you can wait three years before you, you bring in a dollar. If you're bootstrapping, figure out ways to get cash in the door sooner. Um, and then, you know, plan for the long term. Like, you know, you should have your grand vision, but take one step at a time. Um, you know, fi figure out what's the step to get one customer, what's the step to get two customers, what's the step to get three customers and $3 in the door, and work toward, toward that path. <laughs>